this is V, Diamond in the Rough. And who's up for another adventure? So yet again, another whipping chat. Going to be, oops, there goes my phone. Going to be slightly different this time. Um, I have already started the whip and chat with um, my little leopard. Uh, but I'm going to do some something special. Um, and what I'm looking at doing is actually adding in some video footage of um, when I went away. So when Nathan and I were in South Africa and some of the video footage we, we got. So which is really 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 amazing for us so you what I'm going to do is talk through the the day and um, once I get to the end of the day that'll be the end of this whip and chat um, but in amongst that I will actually throw in some video footage so you can see things so anyway start off with so what we did my last whip and chat with this one. Why if I get some drills out? Um, my first, I suppose went with the nines first. Um, first whip and chat was about the trip and uh, getting there and our first day. And where we finished our where we were for our last night, where we were, where we ended up for the night, which was at Hazy View. Hazy View, um, we were actually at Hap Hippo Hollow, was where we were staying. We were there for two nights, and so the next day, which was the twenty second of September, was um, our first safari. So this is you know, if you're sitting upright you're really listening to this so before we went to bed we were told you know before we uh, went out we our, our travel group went our separate ways for the night we were told we'd be up at a certain time for a very early breakfast um, and when we got up you know we'd have breakfast and there'd be a packed lunch for us so we've gotten up in the morning really early really early <laughs> <laughs> um, I chuckle. You go on holidays, but you still you don't end up doing you don't end up doing the good old sleepings when you go on proper holidays like this. But yeah, we had we got up in the morning. We had our breakfast. Uh, we had our lunches for put into a packed lunch, into lunch bags for us, and we all piled it into the bus. Um, I can't remember what time it was still, it was still dawn now the sun was still coming up well the sun hadn't even reached the horizon for us um so yeah we get to um can't remember they'll, well you get to one of the gates i can't remember the name of the gate it's too long ago to actually remember names like that but we got to the gate uh, drove into this big area where there's all these little four drives or not you know, there were these vehicles that were all exposed uh, out to the open um, we were in I think we split up and we ended up in two vehicles maybe even three two I think we were in two vehicles and it was amazing to see so people were all piling in to these cars um, um, I'm, I'm just trying to work it out 
Uh, so yeah, we're all piled into the cars, and we get we get on the road just a little bit down on down, and the driver stops, and he gets out, and he introduces himself. His name was Elvis. <laughs> Not his English name, obvious. Not his uh, native la na name, but that he was at. He was his name was Elvis. He turned around. And he said, "Gave us a rundown on what to expect for the day." He said, "We've got bottles of water in the back. All we've got to do is ask, and he will get them for us." Um, he also said that there were blankets if we wanted them. Now, now was the time to grab them. So. Some of us grabbed blankets, <laughs> just little like lap blankets. Um, one lady turned around and went, no, I don't need it, I'm warm enough. <laughs> and the look on Elvis's face was priceless. Um, so we end up tearing down the, these roads um, with them. Um, Elvis talking about all different things and explaining things to us. Um, most of that, we were in the, Nathan and I were in the very back. So although he had a very loud voice, we didn't always hear him. And we were also too excited, you know, just looking out left and right um, behind us, you know, in front of us, looking to see if we can spot any animals. And what was the first thing we saw? So, um, well, we first saw the impalas. Um, they were our first first thing we got to see. Mind you, get the impalas. The sp I don't know. I can tell the difference between an impala and a springbok, but there's a lot of the African antelope family. That I just, I never, even while I was over there, I never could tell the difference between the two. Never really understood it. <laughs> um, so yeah, but they were the first things we saw were impala. We drove around left, right, and centre all over the place, and the it wasn't an abundance of animals, but there was enough to keep us interested. And our driver, our guide had actually turned around and said to, her, said to us right at the beginning, he said, I can't promise you will see any animals. I will say that you are here and I'll take you to the best places where the animals are because we have an idea where they are. But I cannot guarantee that you will see animals. Which is a fair call. And he gets in and he goes, if you want to guarantee to see animals, go to the zoo. Because at the zoo, you know, you, the animals are there at the zoo. You know you're going to see them. Whereas in the Kruger National Park, it's a big national park. And, hang on, that's a bad drill. And although they know roughly, roughly where the animals are, you know, they're not tied to one area. They roam all over the, over this park. Um, so there's quite a few times where he's like, you know, one woman actually asked, when are we going to see this? When are we going to see that? And he turned around and he said, do you want me to take you to the zoo? <laughs> so basically, you know, she was wanting to see animals. Um, and he's there going, oh, you'll only see that. At the, you're only guaranteed to, see, to, guaranteed to see that at the zoo. Um, so, but the the woman wasn't actually asking that. That was his impression. She was actually asking, what animals might they see? Not what were they will see. What might they see? What is what is in the area? So there's a good lack of communication between um, a few there. So, but. Um, so we saw, um, impala, we saw impalas, we drove around, we actually did see a small herd of lions, 
right on the edge um, right on the edge hanging on I'm just trying to find it on the website I'm just trying I've just pulled up the website now no it's not showing it um, you actually, there you go. we came across some lines sitting very close to the edge of the road. Um, we stopped there for a while, and Elvis, our guide, had you know gotten on the radio. And next thing you know, you see all these vehicles come from all over the place, just suddenly appearing. But it's not crazy that they appear. It's just the guides have been have just come the area but they're doing it very carefully and quietly so as not to scare the um, animals away or <laughs> wherever because one of the things I actually forgot to say it is when at the start of the tour of this it's the safari section of this he actually does turn around and say these animals are not like in the zoo they will not attack you while you're in the car or in the vehicle or they shouldn't he didn't guarantee us but he said they, they don't tend to attack in the car but if you put your arm out they are opportunist so if they see your arm out they might come and eat it because you put it in their way um, So yeah, there was um, so yeah, everyone yeah, all the vehicles are coming up and around and having a look, and everybody's trying to you know you've got to be quiet so you don't startle the animals for st for starters um, because if you startle them, there there is a possibility that they will walk away or get up and move um, or come towards you which is not something that is the, the ideal scenario when you're dealing with things like wild lions so we've been there for a little while and then you know Elvis is like yeah, we, we, time for us to go we need to move on um, and the reason being is all the guides work together and by us moving on meant others can come in and have a look um, because if you're what they do is they get on the radio and they let each other know of oh there's a pie the lions here there's a leopard here there's elephants here and by sharing that information um, everybody comes around but then it also gives a chance of everybody seeing what is there So from that we were we've seen we saw some elephants walking around um, and we went to oh was it Sakusa Sakuzu Sakusa Sakuzu something like that I can't pronounce it um, it was um actually accommodation there's a lodge there and there was um, a tourist shop there where you get drinks and food and we could buy lunch there um, so we're there for a little while and assisted the local economy with some little bit of purchases for the family back home I stopped talking while I'm trying to line up the um, three piece threes and um, so yeah, we were there for a, quite a while so people could eat and drink and get all refreshed um, because while you're out in these vehicles, there's no chance of getting off them to go and, like you do in Australia, go and weave behind a bush or anything like that because <laughs> weaving behind a bush in South Africa is just like putting your life in an animal's hands. Um, so that's the only chance for a toilet is it, at a stop like that. Um, there's a bit of difference 
so we did that uh, we had our lunches we were all relaxed and ready for a bit more of driving around and we went um, where did we go we went to a what they called a hide so in the hide there was um, you know, it's basically, um, I mean, quite a few people know what a hide is. It's just a, an area that's all covered up and camouflaged so that um, you can sit and not impede on the local area. So we went to this hide and we sat there and we were told... <laughs> Elvis turns around and he says, so this tells us about the hide. And he said, the loudest thing that you we that you should have when you're in a hide is a camera you should not be able to hear anything else so you need to keep quiet so that you don't startle away the animals and um yeah oh my gosh that was so funny we've gone in we've sat down and taken photos and nathan's moved around to another side of the hide and he comes back and he's like, oh, you should see that there's this crocodile over here. Have a look at this crocodile. And it's... Back row, can you see? Back row? Yep. To me? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. Uh, here you go, Rana. Yeah, Roger Elvis. Uh, let me know, but if you do find something else around here. Okay, so hopefully you just enjoyed that. That was um, two lots of footage from the elephants. Um, so these are, I am actually showing these in order of how we saw them. So those two were the elephants was very first in the morning, they were pretty early in the day. And then um, the next one is the elephant reaching up and getting the branches. So that's, uh, that's the first part. So now I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna continue drilling. Um, but I will show you add the next section in and this is actually where we um, where we were when we saw the Pride Alliance so hopefully you'll get to enjoy this next bit Oh, 
Okay, so that's footage you just saw then was actually at the lions, where the lions were on the side of the road. You might see I'm a bit wobbly um, and you would have heard vehicles starting and stopping. Um, you know, but it's all so quiet. You, you, you hear the cameras clicking away as people take photos. And it's just amazing to know that you are sitting in a vehicle and the animals are just there. They're not fenced in. They aren't fed. They have to go and get their own food because it's, it's a national park. It's not like a pro not like a private game reserve. So you know they, these guys fight for their food. They're not spoon fed anything. Um, so yeah, from there. So that's the lions. Next footage I'll show you is of the within the hide that I was talking about.
Okay, so that's, I only took a couple of photos, uh, video footage in there, um, that was inside the hide. Um, I was fascinated by the turtles in the water, don't know what they were called, but um, I've got photos there where there's one on the log, two on the log, three on and then four on. Um, I was just fascinated by them, but there was also, there was a, um, crocodile or alligator that was lying on the bed um, on, on to the side and then the hippo who just was just underwater <laughs> he just looked like a little island when he was under he just looked like a little island it was pretty cool to see but it was quite a big area so that's there now let's go to the next On to the next video. I've been I've been I've been put it on sports mode he's moving so fast. You just don't expect to see that do you? Oh. Cross the road. It was, like it? It was yeah. <laughs> Okay, so then that footage was of uh, a tortoise, and as Elvis was busily explaining to one of the people in the vehicle with us, it is because he is on land. Turtles are in water, tortoise is on land. So it was at that point, just after we filmed uh, that little dude walking across the road, um, we had a radio call and it was, you could hear, although we couldn't understand what was being said, we could hear the excitement. So suddenly we're off like the clap. It's really, really, really fast flying down this road. Um, and then all of a sudden we stopped and that's when we stopped Elvis turned around we were at a dirt road we were at a dirt path ready to go into a dirt path and he stops there and he turns around and he says to us now where we are going now is something very very special you cannot make a noise the only noise you can make is the sound of your camera if I hear you talking, we go. If you move around too much, we go. If you stand up, we go. And you know, we've all got there and we've agreed. Yep, okay. And then he inches forward a little bit and he steps, stops the car again, stops the vehicle again, and he goes, okay. So we are going in under that tree over there. And what you will see there is a female leopard, which is this leopard. Okay. And he goes, she has two cubs. Her cubs are not with her at the moment, but she is in the tree. Her cubs are around, but the, she is in the tree. If you make any noise, any noise other than the camera, we will go. Because... We don't want her to jump down onto us and we don't want her to run off because we've scared her away and therefore no and no one else can see her or something like that. 
yeah, we didn't use the th therefore word, but yeah. So basically we're told, sit down, shut up and just take pictures. And it was amazing and I hope you enjoy the footage. Okay, so that's it for that's it for the video shows. I hope you enjoyed those videos. Um, it fairly does bring you brings the memories back, um, and yet again for me it gets my feet itching. Going, I want to go away and see something different, something amazing. Um, what can I say about it? Is if you've ever got the opportunity. Look at those photos. It's worth doing it just to see stuff like that you don't see normally. So we finished our safari and then we went, to, we all pulled back into the bus and then went and found a place for lunch. So Craig, our guide, told us about Wimpy's. So we didn't know, we'd not heard what Wimpy's was. So it's like, okay, what is Wimpy's? And so Wimpy's is a fast food chain, right? But um, how did he put it? I'm just trying to remember how he put it. It, it was a fast food place. So over there, food's really cheap. And yet again, it's you, you tip your, your wait staff. He turned around and he said that um, um, what was it? <laughs> Apparently, McDonald's had bought into had come to South Africa to um, set up and ended up not surviving because of Wimpy's because Wimpy's food was so much better than what they called the plastic um, McDonald's um, so when we had Wimpy's oh yeah did we discover that how good that was which it was really 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 good okay that's the D's up to the E's um, that's actually where Nathan discovered what it was it it was the creme did it was did he try creme soda 
Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Can't remember what was there or somewhere else. No, it was there. <clears throat> Had a cream, cream soda, not creamy soda, cream soda. Spider. So that's where you get the soft drink. You get the soft drink uh, in a glass and it's served with ice cream. So that, that's a spider. And that ended up being a running joke for us because every time we went to Wimpy's that's what Nathan got. So that's where we discovered Wimpy's and creme soda which Nathan still likes to this day and for me to get it for him I have to go to shops that sell stuff from South Africa. Um, so yeah we had lunch, um, I think we drove around a bit more, we may have seen more of the park um, I think it was. Well, we had lunch and then we continued on and then we got on the bus. But it was an amazing day. When we left um, the National Park, we left, when we left Kruger, we were all so quiet. Um, and I don't think it was because we were tired. I think it was just in awe of what we had seen what we had witnessed is just amazing um, so we went out got back to the hotel back to Hippo Hollow um, I ended up going having dinner we did have some hippos that were actually on the lawn some mama hippo and some smaller ones so unlike the night before this night we the guards were actually the guys that were on the ground there were more noticeable because before they were just basically sitting there not doing anything but this time they're actually moving around um, and you can see that they they're moving around was just them keeping an eye on where the hippos were so we've managed to come down to the edge at night time, come down to the edge and had a look. Hang on, no more ears. Can't see more ears. And yeah, the, the guys pointed out, there goes the coat ice machine again, sorry guys. So they pointed out where the hippos were and we just sat there and watched them in our nice safe location we had a really good meal um, I'm not sure if I've already said it Neil but the hippo is the most classed as one of the most dangerous animals in South Africa um, not because it eats you <laughs> But because if you startle a hippo, they will run at you and bowl you over and crush you to death. There is no chance of surviving, well there's very little chance of surviving being rushed by a hippo. Once you've seen one and you've seen the size, you get to understand. Um, well you see one and you see the size of it. Excuse me, you see the size of it. And you don't realise how fast they actually can move. But my gosh, the size of them. It'd be worse than being hit by a truck. So yeah, that's... Um, that's basically what we did. We had... Um, we were told that we had a late start the next day. We didn't have to get out of bed till 6am. I think we were up at... 4.30 the morning before that morning so yeah next morning was an early late start at six o'clock out of bed wake up time to leave at about seven um, so yeah that's uh, where we leave it and I'm going to leave this whip and chat right there and you'll have to stay tuned for the next exciting adventure um I'll probably throw, it all depends on, for me, with the videos that I'm putting in, I only put those ones in because um, 
it was the animals it's because it was kruger there's other parts of africa that I, when i go through i'll have a look at videos and see whether there's any worth going in but i just wanted to talk specifically about the animals that we saw and just share it with you because it was it was absolutely amazing to see and so worth sharing so please like thumbs up thumbs down if you please put a comment if you want to see more footage of south africa maybe i could put it in um do an individual do one youtube clip just of all my videos that i've got um i don't know how that would work <laughs> um the please if you want to subscribe hit the bell you'll get notified the next time i upload and you'll be able to see whether it's the whip and chat that has more of the south african adventures in it i'm going to continue on and um i'll talk to you on my next whip and chat uh, which will probably be this section here and i'll give you another installment of um, another day of my holiday uh, with nathan that was given to us from Suma. So yeah, I will talk to you next time. Bye.